everybody. Welcome back to Focus on Photos. I am Hannah with the Scott County Public Library here in Georgetown, Kentucky. And this time I'm going to be talking about photographing flowers. We all know that April showers bring May flowers and this is the perfect time of year to get out there and take a couple pictures of the trees. We have these beautiful flowering trees behind me right now. And of course we're all going to be planting flowers in our own flower beds and we have arboretums and all kinds of other pretty gardens and things like that available to us where you can get out and take different varieties and i'm going to give you a few tips on how to make the best of those photos like i've mentioned in every single video thus far good lighting is key you want to make sure that you have good light so that you make sure that your your flowers look good and if the light on the flowers isn't good you have a couple options you can get a reflector and put some more light on them you can block the light you can add light you can even change the time that you take the photos especially if they're flowers that are in your yard you can always just come out at a different time of day and try to take the photos again when the lights a little bit better now the second tip is going to be to avoid wind and you guys are going to see there is some wind here today with me so my hair is blowing the tree limbs are blowing and when you have really delicate stems that's going to make it really challenging to take photos of flowers they're going to be moving all over the place so you can possibly stabilize them so that you get a good photo but my best bet is to just try to take the pictures when it's not so windy out use a shallow depth of field. Now you might remember from my portrait video where I tell you that a shallow depth of field will make the subject in the front in focus more and the, the objects behind that thing is going to be um, a little bit more blurry. That's a really good thing when you're doing pictures of flowers because a lot of times they're close-ups and that's just going to make that flower pop out more and the background will just blur out. Now if you're doing a picture of like a bouquet of flowers or an arrangement maybe not quite as much but if you're doing a single stem or just a couple blooms then a shallow depth of field usually looks really nice for flower photos and that's going to bring me to my next point is you can fill the frame or you can step back a lot of times when it comes to flowers i really like to fill the frame i like the entire photo to be of flower. Now you can step back and take a picture of, you know, the stem or the petals or, you know, that arrangement bouquet, um, the trees, things like that. But a lot of times if you zoom in on these trees and, you know, the actual bloom, you're going to end up getting a little bit of a better shot than, you know, if you're going to be way out here and you see the pink and it's pretty, but you may not necessarily see the shape of the actual flower. Be sure to move around. That's one of the really nice things about flowers is you can relatively easily move around them. So you might get a better angle if you go to this side or that side or, you know, a really cool thing is to shoot from um, below, shooting up with the, the sky as the background to the actual flower. It's really, you know, you have a lot of options and you can do some really cool stuff. Don't be afraid of additional elements. Now, some people are fearful of insects and that's fine, but if you can get a picture with a butterfly or a bee or you know some other type of bug on there, it might turn out really cool. So try to get some of those elements in there. Don't be scared of them. Maybe just try to embrace it. You might end up liking what you get out of it. Another thing that I love to do is photograph flowers after it has rained or after I have watered them. The colors just seem to pop more. The water droplets on the petals look really cool. So if you have the opportunity to get out there after it has rained, I would definitely encourage you to do that. And also the light is usually really good because a lot of times there's still those leftover clouds that diffuse the light for you and you can get some really, really pretty pictures. And last and most important is make sure that you have fun. If you have watched this video to this point, then you have some interest in photography and you are gonna wanna get out there and see if you can get some cool photos, maybe to decorate your home, maybe you just wanna create pretty pictures, whatever the reason is, make sure that when you are out there doing this that you are having a good time. And you know, with the, the temperatures rising out there, make sure that you maybe uh, wear a hat or some sunscreen, protect your skin. So next month I'm gonna be talking about 
fireworks and light paintings. It'll be just in time for the 4th of July. So we'll get you prepared in June so that you're ready to take pictures of those fireworks in July. So you guys have a great day. Thanks again for tagging along with me. If you'd like to see any of my other videos, you can find them archived on our Facebook page or our YouTube page here at the Scott County Public Library in Georgetown, Kentucky. And we thank you. You have a great day.